welcome to my channel. If you have clicked on this video, chances are you are military affiliated, or maybe you're just curious about what the military lifestyle looks like. But no matter the reason why you clicked on this video today, I am going to be covering the pros and cons of living in base housing. Now my family and I are living overseas in Guam and we have been stationed here going on three years and the entire time we've been here, we have lived in base housing. Now, when we got here, we did have the opportunity to choose whether or not we wanted to live out in town or live on base and we chose on base because it was just easier, easier for us at the time. Now, just know if you are a family PCSing to Guam in the near future, there is a mandatory order in place at the moment to fill capacity of houses on base. So if you are arriving, you will be forced to live on post unless they don't have any openings or they're at that certain percentage for housing. So typically there's plenty of space for two bedroom houses and three bedroom houses, but four bedroom houses are pretty limited. So if you are a bigger family, luck might just be in your favor if you are wanting to live off base. Um, you can also go through your command to try to get a letter to waive living on base, but uh, it can be hit and miss. So just know if you are arriving here soon, it will be mandatory for you to live on base, but just know that not every base is like that. Normally stateside, it is not mandatory to live on base, but here currently it is. So I am still going to cover the pros and cons of living on base. So the first pro is going to be that we don't pay any utilities. Now this means we don't pay any water, we don't pay any trash, and we don't pay any electricity. Now this is fantastic. If you have seen any of my other videos, you've probably seen me talk about the cost of electricity here in Guam. Um, it was already high when we got here three years ago and the prices just continue to rise as the years goes on. People are paying anywhere from $800 to $1,000 for their electricity bills. They're scared to cook on their stoves. They turn off their AC units during the day while they're at work and don't turn them on until they get home just to save costs anywhere they can because the money that we are allotted when living off base to cover those utilities, for some people's houses, it's not covering it. That's how expensive it is. So being able to run my AC and keep my house at 68 to 70 daily and I don't have to worry about coming home to a hot house is great. Being able to do as many loads of laundry as I want, to run the dishwasher, and just do everything that it takes to survive and run a household, I can do without even having to think of the cost. So that is the first pro in my book. All right, you guys, the next pro that I have for you guys is going to be the sense of security. Now, I don't know about you guys, but me as a spouse, when my husband has deployments underways or even just like duty for the night and I'm home alone, I get paranoid and just like nervous. I grew up with someone with like a big house. I'm one of four girls and my mom was a stay at home mom. So like someone was always home. I'm not used to being home alone and I hate it. I just, like I said, I get nervous and I'm like, what is that sound? It's like the bump bumps in the night so having the gate is just like like i said it's like a comfort blanket and just an extra sense of security i can personally speak that we haven't had to deal with any sort of break-ins we haven't had to deal with any theft living on base now i know every post is different and i have heard of like stateside kids stealing stuff out of your garage or you know like someone driving by there is a lot of contracted people that do work on base but for me personally we've never had to deal with that i feel safe leaving my front door unlocked. I feel safe leaving my garage open if I'm like home. I don't feel like scared of doing that. It is just a sense of security. All right, another pro for you guys is going to be when something breaks, maintenance will come out and fix it. Now I know this is the case basically anywhere you rent, but because we do fall under the government, we're held to a little bit higher of a standard. Now that doesn't mean you aren't gonna have to fight for getting things fixed sometimes, but we still are held to a standard and once you get the correct people involved, things do move pretty fast. Now I have known people who have rented out in town and their AC unit has gone out and their renters have basically failed to replace it. Their house has become infestated with mold or termites. And then basically they have to get Navy legal involved to get any course of action done and to be able to move out of that house and break their lease. So we just don't have to deal with that. Maintenance is a pretty quick turnaround and they're pretty good at getting things fixed in a, in a good manner, depending on what it is. So like I said, maintenance and living on base is better than having to fight some of the issues that I've seen happen off post. 
The next pro that I have for you guys, which might not be a pro for everyone, but for me it is, is we are in close proximity to literally everything. We're close to the commissary, which is where we shop for groceries. We're close to the NEX, which is where we shop for all our other necessities. We get gas on base because it's the cheapest on island. And I work on base, so I'm basically literally so close to everything. I don't have to commute or drive anywhere for anything. Now, not to say that I use a lot of gas living on a small island anyway, but I just use even less because I'm like a minute drive to anything I would actually need. So I also love that I don't have to deal with the gate traffic in the morning or the afternoon. It can get backed up ridiculous. A lot of tourists will try to get on base because they think they can get to the Gap Gap Beach here and they want to go to it and don't realize that it is behind the gate. So people will get all the way up and then they have to run license plates. They have to turn someone around and it just backs up the gate traffic. So you never know what to expect. You always have to give yourself extra time. So I'm just glad I don't have to deal with that mainly for work. So. I don't know, close proximity to everything is a plus for me in my book. All right, and the last pro that I wanna to touch base on definitely has to do with us living here in Guam when it comes to base housing, but that is going to be the relief efforts that they put towards us when it came to Typhoon Mawar. Now, basically three weeks post Typhoon, we had power back on, which was really good compared to other people. Out in town, people were out of power for three months to four months, if not still slowly regaining their power. And even once they got it back, there was still a ton of rolling blackouts. People are still having like random power outages. Once we got ours back, ours has been pretty consistent and we haven't had to deal with the loss of power. So we also got water up and running. We weren't without water. Now it did go down for a little bit because they found E. coli in the water and we had to have like bottled water, but for the most part, our stuff was all back up and running pretty fast. Now, this is, like I said, because we're behind the gate, once again, I'll say it, we are falling under the government, so things move a little bit faster than out in town. So just keep that in mind if you're coming to Guam, typhoons are a thing, and being behind the gate, things moved a little bit faster than they did out in town. All right, moving on to the cons. The first one that I have for you guys is going to be that Base housing it is not necessarily the most up to date. Now, it's not flat out ugly, but like I said, it's not the most highly renovated houses. So definitely living off base, you're gonna be able to find something that's a lot nicer and a lot more up to date. Uh, being overseas in Guam, we don't get what's called BAH. So typically stateside, you get allotted a certain amount of money to find towards a rental and it's based off your rank. If your rental unit is less than that allotted amount, you get to pocket the rest. Living overseas in Guam, we don't get that. We get what's called OHA. So basically, they take all your money regardless of how much your rent is. So you don't get to pocket anything. You just get OHA, and then you do get a allotment for your utilities. So, um, But typically, you can find something that is within your OHA that is a lot nicer than living on base. The next con that I have for you guys is going to be that you might not be able to escape from work or the military life. Now, as a spouse, this doesn't really bother me, but as a service member and my husband, I'm sure it probably would. They've already signed their life away and the military owns them. The last thing they want to do is be reminded of that when they go home and living on base, they're typically pretty close to work. So if work needs something, they are minutes away. They can just run back to the office. They also have colors that goes off every morning at sunrise and every night at sunset that continues to remind you that you are living on base. So if you don't love the lifestyle and you wanna be a little bit farther away, that can be a con of living on base. The next con that I have for you guys, and it's one that I necessarily haven't had to deal with, but I have heard people say, and that is kids everywhere. The neighborhood that we live in on base is extremely quiet. Not a lot of our neighbors have children, so I don't really even see them walking down the street, but that is not the case for every single neighborhood. I have heard that some have kids running around, which can be good and bad because not everyone holds their child to the same standards as you, you do when raising your child. So you do get kind of all walks of life, but it could also be a benefit because there are other children or other families going through the same thing on base living around you. And so your children might have someone to play with. But for those of you who might not necessarily like, like children or don't have children of your own, that could be a con for you guys. 
Another con about living in base housing is there are some pretty strict rules. You can't just run around and do whatever you want. It's basically like living under an HOA. They have rules on not being able to work on your car in the driveway. So if you're someone who is like very good with their hands and like into mechanics, they don't want you working on it in your driveway. You can get fined for it. They also are very nitpicky about where you park your car you are responsible for mowing your own lawn even though there are empty houses that they do a god-awful job of taking care of like the grass is taller than i am and they will come and put a notice on your door to tell you to mow your lawn so if you don't like living under an hoa base housing probably isn't for you because like i said there are some pretty strict rules that can be pretty obnoxious when they're not holding themselves to the same standard Another con to living on base is it can be pretty hard to get people on base, unlike other bases. Now, stateside, I know when we were stationed at a banger, it was pretty easy to get like a friend on base. Basically, I would just show my military ID and then they would show like their driver's license or what, like their passport, any ID that they had, and I could sponsor them to get on base. Currently, that is not a thing here on Naval Base Guam. They have to have a actual visitor's pass from the visitor center. So you have to go when they are open. They have to give all the proper, proper documentation. They have to run a background check for them to be able to even get on base. So if you ever wanted your friend from out in town to just swing by and stop at your house, um, that's not gonna be the case. It can be like a long lengthy process to get any sort of visitor. So just know that if you are going to live on base. Another con, and this is for those of you with pets, and it kind of goes back into the strict rules con, and that is none of the houses on base are fenced in. So if you have a pet, they there's nowhere to offense them in at. So a lot of people I have seen in the past have tried to make makeshift fences. They are not allowed. Um, you will get fined or you will get a notice that you have to take it down. So just, just a little quick con is that if you are someone who is looking for something with a fenced yard, you're not gonna find it here on Naval Base Guam. All right, the next con that I have for you guys is going to be one that kind of contradicts one of my pros, and that is going to be centered around maintenance. Now maintenance overall as a whole, we have thoroughly enjoyed. Every time they come into our house to repair something, they are very respectful, they are quick at getting the job done. But basically anytime we have something bigger that needs to be repaired, we need government approval. And that gets routed up to our housing manager to get it replaced. And she is awful at doing her job. I'll just tell you right now, I absolutely despise her. I basically have to call her nonstop to get any sort of updates, which she never answers her phone, and she takes forever to get back to us, or you basically have to go sit in her office to demand to speak with her because she's always out in the field and she's never in her office. So getting anything fixed is extremely slow if it needs government approval. For example, our AC unit keeps having to get repairs and multiple maintenance like workers have put in a request to get it completely replaced before it actually goes out and like i said that was three months ago that that request was put in and it still has not been in to like get repaired i have to call daily to get an update and even then it's it's just slow so know that housing is the problem not maintenance um the other thing is if you are a dual working household it can be kind of hard to get maintenance scheduled they do not work on the weekends so that is typically the time that me and my husband are off they don't work unless it's an emergency and they have to come out to your house. The other thing is they don't like to schedule things in the afternoon. So sometimes I'm off at noon, so I try to schedule things like after I get off work. And a lot of times they wanna do things in the morning, they don't wanna schedule it that late in the day. So it can be kind of hard to get things fixed and you end up having to take off the whole day to get your maintenance in to be repaired. All right, you guys, well, that wraps up some of my pros and cons of living in base housing. I know I didn't cover everything. I'm sure there is a bunch of things that I missed, so please leave me your pros and cons in the comment box below. But that is going to wrap up this video today. I have created lots of other military-related videos, so I will leave the playlist down below if you are interested in seeing some of the other videos that I have created. But that is going to be it for today. I will see you guys next Friday or next Sunday for a video don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy my military content and don't forget to subscribe like i said so you don't miss an upload again bye guys